Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Just a number gamer here, back on System Number Gaming, and today, as you guys can probably tell by the title, I have actually decided to make a new series off of Dead by Daylight. But don't worry, I'll still be doing streams on Dead by Daylight. But this will be a different playlist, an entirely different little mini series that I'll be doing. It is basically me making episodes, one episode per archive cutscene and all the tapes that lead up to the cutscene. So if you yourselves are having trouble unlocking these cutscenes, you'll be able to see them on my channel, fully unlocked. I am still working through unlocking other ones, but for now, I have enough to get through for the next few days, if not the rest of this week. And I guys, I hope you guys enjoy it. So buckle up, let's get right into the movie. Fatigued from the long flight, Yun Jin yawns as she turns on her laptop. She landed in Rio de Janeiro just two hours ago, but her work cannot wait. Looking through her mailbox, she spots a dozen unread emails from an unknown user addressing her by name. Few know her as Yun Jin. Most only know her as Magnum Opus. She clicks on an email. A graphic, detailed description of someone's plan to murder her and the trickster. Signed, the trickster's number one fan. Death threat. An abnormally specific one with a picture of her in the hotel lobby. Before the death of No Spin, she ignored such threats. But now, her manicured hand shakes as she reaches for her phone. The threat is too serious to be taken lightly. She calls her security crew for an emergency meeting. Outings are restricted to recording sessions and concert rehearsals only. A bodyguard is assigned to the trickster and herself. Everyone complies with the new rules except for the trickster, who argues against staying on the hotel premises. No surprises there. Her relationship with the trickster has been on the rocks for months now. He challenges every decision she makes, his ego pushing her patience to its limit. Because of their frequent creative disagreements, their next album is behind schedule, forcing her to produce three new songs while overseeing his tour. Her security expert confirms that the phones are ready. At her request, a tracking GPS application was installed on all company phones. No one else knows about this. If the trickster keeps testing her patience, this app will come in handy. It's for his own good and hers. Yun Jin pours herself a cup of coffee at the recording studio, stifling another yawn. Her temples are throbbing. The jet lag is hitting her hard. Plus, the constant threat of a crazed fan prevents her from getting any sleep at night. On her way back to the booth, she notices that the studio next to theirs is occupied. She peeks inside, a young man is laughing in the recording booth. He has an easygoing smile that could sell thousands of magazines. She recognizes the man at the mix table, Alano Muse, a semi-famous producer from San Diego. What is he doing in Rio? Some bits of fresh gossip could help re-energize her. She taps on the door's window. The door creaks open. He remembers her, of course. Who could forget the magnum opus? She invites herself in as he plays the track he is working on. A slow, predictable build for the baseline, formulaic, too safe to be of any interest. Then, an ethereal voice fills the room. Yunjin almost spills her coffee. The artist's voice is crystalline. His range is powerful, yet nuanced. Who is that? Alano tells Lucas, the young artist, to drop down his pitch a notch. Bad call. The track should be building up to push Lucas's range instead of confining it to a boring, generic sound. She walks up to Lucas and hands him her business card. Contact me when you're ready to become a serious artist. A pang of regret hits her on her way out. She said those exact words to the trickster many years ago. Back then, she looked forward to working with him. Those days are long gone. 
At the hotel bar, Hyun Jin takes a sip of her cold kaiparina, the sugarcane liquor smoothening the sour burst of lime. Why did she give that young artist Lucas her business card? It's not like she can produce him. Another pang of nostalgia. Another sip of Kaiparina. She misses it. Hunting new talents. The raw creative chaos of designing a bold sound. The adrenaline rush of the first album. Things are different now. Her time is split between handling the trickster's growing ego and following a generic, endless production cycle. Is this the cost of success? Producing music that makes her cringe, not to mention handling arguments about bodyguards and curfews while being threatened by a crazed, psychotic fan. Her life is so different from what she imagined as a little girl. Back then, music was the only good thing she had. She created tracks in her bedroom, imagining a stage of bright lights where she was safe, loud, and free. That is what pop music is to her, a vital dose of unapologetic release. Now, thanks to her success, she lives in a golden cage. Down goes the Kaiparina. The bartender gives her a glance and she nods. Keep them coming. She calls Mighty One executives for a virtual meeting and gives them the news. Once she finishes the three tracks in Rio, she is done with the trickster. She will move on to producing the launch of trainees. A mighty one executive cuts her off. They have more urgent business to discuss. Damaging rumors are trending online. A disturbed delusional fan claims to have murdered someone at a trickster concert. Yun Jin closes her fists, her long manicured nails digging into her palms, anything to keep her hands from shaking again. She will handle this mediatic storm for her brand's sake. But after Rio, she is done with the trickster, whether Mighty One is willing or not. Online, rumors about the murder are trending. An anonymous post claims that the victim was last seen alive at the trickster's VIP meetup after his concert in New York early this year. Yun Jin remembers that night, not because of the concert, but because of a detail that has been replaying in her mind ever since. Bleeding scratch marks on the trickster's forearms when he showed up at the concert's after party. The rumors online were rekindling the suspicion she silenced before. Years ago, the trickster and she arrived in Miami several days earlier than planned. Yun Jin attended networking events while the trickster rehearsed. Three days following their arrival, a folk singer was found dead downtown near the bar where he performed. A security footage was released to the public, showing a man dressed in black, with his face covered, leading the singer down an alley. The dark, blurry footage revealed little about the suspect, but Yun Jin noticed a detail that twisted her stomach in knots. She recognized the gold-rimmed headphones around the suspect's neck, with two large X's, one for each ear. It was the brand new model of the Xerxes 1050X headphones, which few audiophiles knew about and even fewer could afford. She recognized the model right away because the trickster favored their equipment over other expensive models. He wore a similar pair on the plane to Miami, but then switched to a lesser model for the rest of the tour, which only fueled her doubts. Back then, however, she was not in a good place. The death of No Spin was still fresh. Acute insomnia kept her mind in a haze, and the jet lag of the tour only worsened her state. In the end, she decided to let the police do their job and focus on hers, producing music. But now someone else was dead. Someone whom the trickster might have been the last one to see alive. The headphones, the scratch marks, and the late night outs were details but they added up. How many coincidences does it take to know? A knock on the door makes her jump. The head of security is here. Yun Jin follows her gut. She confronts him. She bluffs about firing the whole security crew if he does not come clean. It pays off. She learns that the trickster left the hotel premises last night. His bodyguard tried to follow, 
but lost him on the way. Yunjin pounds her fist on the table. Why would he leave the hotel? To go where? And to do what? Despite working with the trickster for years, he is still no more than a stranger. While he generates incredible profit, it comes at a cost. If the trickster is linked to a murder, so is she. Even if there is no evidence. Even if it's just rumors, it's her life on the line, her entire career. She could never produce music again, and the worst part is, it's her own fault. She knows better than to trust someone in this industry. She needs to get answers before it is too late. Whatever the trickster is doing at night, she must find out. Her doubts won't be quieted until she knows for certain. Yun Jin leaves her Yun Jin looks at Yun Jin leaves her security detail behind during the trickster's rehearsal. What she is up to is not strictly legal after all. She shows her VIP badge at the doorman and enters the trickster's changing room. Perhaps she could find something in here that could be a clue as to what the trickster is up to. Amidst the flamboyant costume she looks for a clue, receipts, notes, pictures. All she finds is a gym bag. Inside lies a water bottle, a few t-shirts, and his wallet. No bills or anything of interest in his wallet, except for his hotel room key card. Perhaps she is looking in the wrong place. Someone chatting loudly on the side of the door alerts her. She snatches the hotel key card and zips up the bag just as the trickster's assistant walks in. Yun Jin quells her thudding heart and keeps her expression impassive as she walks out. Whatever the assistant saw, she will not dare mention it, at least not to anyone who matters. Yun Jin only pauses when she reaches the trickster's hotel room, key card in hand. If she does this, there is no turning back. Yet if the trickster is hiding something, she needs to know what it is, before everyone else does, before it ruins her life. There can be no doubts. Yun Jin pushes the door open. The trickster's room is tidy, almost as if he barely spends time here. She goes through his luggage, a pile of odd clothes, all black hoodies and sweatpants, a black face mask, clothes she's never seen him wear on tour. A tap on the door. Room service. Yin Jin drops the face mask. Come back later. She finds nothing odd in the room except for a rare top-of-the-line sampler on his bedside table. Intrigued, she presses play. A series of loud, violent screams fill the room. The screeches sound... genuine. Samples from a horror film? Yet she cannot fully shake her initial disturbing thought. What if it is... genuine? What she finds next only enhances her discomfort. A sharpening kit for knives, whetstones and cleaning products, a whole collection of sharpeners. A past conversation overheard at the recording studio replays in her mind. Lucas, the young artist, introducing himself to the trickster, asking about the flamboyant knife in his hands. The trickster replying that he always keeps a blade on him. Yun Jin picks up a whetstone. Why sharpen a stage prop? Sure, the trickster used real knives to do stunt work as a kid, but it is no longer necessary. This obsession with knives is not just for show. And what is the point of sharpening a knife if it's not to use it? She shudders. Another noise at the door. Yun Jin puts down the whetstone. I said come back le- The trickster walks into the room, catching her off guard. Her eyes meet his. He is just the awkward kid I signed years ago. I will not let him drag me down. His outrage meets her fury. Yun Jin picks up the sampler. Where the hell do you wander off at night? And what is this twisted horror bullshit? What if the media got a hold of it? Your career would be over! Trickster sighs and admits that after the death of No Spin, his mind drifted to a dark place. He rarely talks about their death. And she can tell why. That day still haunts her dreams. Time passes, but guilt remains. Yun Jin spots his phone on the table. Grab a drink from the minibar, Trickster. Today's rehearsal is cancelled. 
She keeps the sampler and reminds him to stay on hotel grounds until the concert. He nods in agreement. Good. For her ploy to work, he must think she trusts him. Yun Jin looks out from her hotel room. Outside, the downpour is relentless, causing flash floods in parts of the city. She calls her staff. No matter how bad the storm is, the show must go on. Yet the weather is not to blame for the growing apprehension in the pit of her stomach. There is something off about the trickster, a hunch she can no longer ignore, no matter how profitable he is. While he might seem sincere, years in the business have taught her that she cannot trust anyone. Yonjin grabs her phone and activates the GPS tracker on the trickster's company phone. His location appears as a blue dot on the huge map of Rio. Her gut feeling is right. He is no longer on the hotel premises. The chase is on. Time to teach the trickster a new trick. Yun Jin slows down near trickster's location. As she approaches, a gray sedan suddenly speeds off. She checks her phone. The blue dot is getting farther away on the map. Trickster must be in the car that just took off. Yun Jin stomps on the accelerator and speeds off. After a few turns, she catches up with the sedan, which makes a sharp right. Yun Jin follows, yanking the steering wheel while stomping on the brakes. Her car drifts into the turn, gliding towards a wretched narrow alley. The sedan accelerates and swerves left, entering a narrow street. Yun Jin repeats her maneuver and drifts left, but the wheels hydroplane on the puddled asphalt, and the car spirals out of control. A thundering crash! Yun Jin's head is propelled onto the steering wheel. A flash of white light, then a burning pain follows, coursing down her body from her neck to her lower back. Yunjin coughs and gasps at the pain. For a moment, all she can do is breathe. When she exhales, the pain lessens slightly. Loud rock is blaring on the radio. It's so loud. She reaches forward and turns it off absentmindedly. A spot above her left brow is burning. She touches her forehead softly and winces. A drop of blood drips down her finger. The windshield is cracked on the passenger side. Yun Jin moves slowly, carefully leaning over. It's okay. Everything is okay. I'm okay. She looks out. The car crashed into a street lamp on the passenger side. This could have been much worse. A familiar ding interrupts her thoughts. Her phone. Yun Jin slowly leans forward, her hand searching under the seat. She grabs her phone and unlocks the screen. A text message from the trickster. Help. Why would he ask for her help? Unless she missed something. Unless... The trickster is not the one she is chasing. Yun Jin's heart skips a beat. The death threat. The trickster's number one fan. Perhaps the crazed fan found out about the trickster's nightly escapades and decided to strike. Kidnappings go hand in hand with death threats after all. She lets out a curse. In her rush to chase the trickster, she left her bodyguard behind. If anything happens to the trickster Ji Woon and she was too blind to stop it. No, she has enough guilt on her conscience already. Yun Jin readjusts her seatbelt. She turns on the ignition and the engine coughs in response. She grits her teeth and tries again. It won't be like the fire. I won't give up on him. She turns on the ignition again. And again. On the third try, the engine revs back to life. She puts her phone back on the dashboard and follows the blue dot. Yun Jin follows the GPS until she reaches a desolate parking lot facing several abandoned warehouses. The blue dot remains immobile. This is it. Ji Woon should be here somewhere. But where? As Yun Jin steps out of the car, a heavy curtain of rain falls on her sore, shivering body. Daylight is cloaked by dark storm clouds. The parking lot is filled with broken down cars. Yun Jin uses her cell phone's flashlight to find the gray sedan. As thunder rumbles, her phone illuminates a bloodied handprint on a car window. She rushes to the door and peeks inside. A sudden blur of motion, she pulls the door open. A rat skitters out of the car. 
Some items lie on the back seat. Ji Woon's phone. A rag. And some rope. Yun Jin closes her prickling eyes. She might be too late. There's no time to waste crying. If Ji Woon is still alive, he needs all the help he can get. Yun Jin grabs her phone and calls the police, then her security crew. Whatever this crazed fan has planned, it ends now. Rumbling thunder. Yun Jin is staggering through the rain, looking for a clue, a trail. An icy gust lashes her drenched body, but she cannot stop. Not until Ji Woon is safe. A rat skitters over a puddle upon which lies a white business card. Yun Jin picks up the blood-stained card and reads, Magnum Opus, music producer. It's hers. With a shudder, she realizes she might know the person who kidnapped Ji Woon. Police sirens are blaring in the distance, but she cannot tell if they are coming for her or the several people caught in the storm. Yun Jin shouts Ji Woon's name, yelling in despair over sirens and thunder. Then she hears a scream coming from across the parking lot, where stands an abandoned warehouse. She rushes to the warehouse, reaching its wide doors. A chain is wrapped around the handles, padlocked into place. Meanwhile, police are arriving on the scene. A brutal scream emerges from the warehouse. She cannot afford to wait. What happened to No Spin cannot happen again. Never again. Picking up a lead pipe from the ground, she strikes the padlock again and again. Ji Woon! Ji Woon! The padlock breaks open. Hello there, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button, greatly shows your support on this channel and the series as a whole. Also, if you are new to the channel, wanna hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all foreseeable content and the foreseeable, in the foreseeable future. And with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye everybody.